Hey everybody, this is Thriving Thursday with my business partner and friend Wonderwit and myself, Jamie Shaw. And tonight we have an extra special topic for you, the, the seven stages of personal change. But before we get into that, you know, we were we were talking before we went live about how fast life goes and you know how fast your day goes. Sometimes, you know, you uh like last night, I went to bed at 9.30 and it seemed like I just closed my eyes and those drifted off to sleep and the alarm clock was going off and it was time to go do my routine again. And it seems like, you know, every day is the same routine. You get up, uh, get, have a shower, get ready for breakfast, have your coffee, you know, do your morning routine, jump in the truck, drive the same route to work and then you get to work you look like you're you're working you look like you're busy or face fresh refresh facebook you know you go in and have a meeting with the boss or you help a colleague out or whatever then it's before you know it it's time to go home and you do the same thing you drive the same route home and you come home and then you watch tv and you know and it's a vicious you watch tv for a little while hang out with your family then go to bed and start all over again and it's a vicious cycle that we all go through. And, you know, that's why I wanted to talk about personal change, because we get stuck in this vicious rut of doing the same thing every day, day in and day out. And many people aren't willing to change. They just accept that. But if you want something better in your life, you know, then you need to, you know, kind of pay attention to what this personal change is and how to go about doing it. So, uh, you know, we were we were kind of talking about that in the pre-show before we got started, and you know, and how how as you get older, it seems like you know you wake up on Monday morning, and before you realize it, it's Thursday, you know, and it's time for a Thriving Thursday. You know, we're like going crazy because sometimes you know we don't talk to each other all week long, and you know it gets kind of crazy with my life, my work schedule, and wonder which gets pretty crazy with her schedule with her kids and stuff your kids still on spring break and still driving you insane nope no they're finally back to school and driving me insane because they don't want to wake up in the morning <laughs> but the cycle you know people go through their whole lives in this cycle you know in this uh oh i had the word for it a minute ago and i can't remember what it was you know the same routine you know, doing the same routine over and over again. So, um, you know, do your days feel like you're they're the same routine over and over again sometimes? So, I had to find my unmute button. I lost it. Um, yeah, and you know, and I am definitely guilty of that where we get stuck in ruts and we get caught up in that. All right, get up, get dressed, get to school get out you know and then i get in my habit you know as soon as the kids are gone i'm in my habit my little one stays in the morning so i have my little things or i study and i i do my coursework and and you know progressions here put the laundry in get the cleaning done you know all that kind of stuff and that's how our days roll and then i take my daughter to school and i come back and i do my calls and i do my work and um you know and i get things ready for dinner i pull things out and Go get got time to go pick up the kids and time to eat dinner, time to shower, time and it just ticks on like that every day. And then you know, it, before I know it, it's the weekend, and I'm like, "What happened?" Because I swear, I closed. I I went to bed on Monday. I woke up. It was Wednesday, and then I closed my eyes again, and it's Saturday morning. And I'm like, "Okay, well, we made it through the week, and everyone's alive, but." <laughs> Where's the rest of my week? Where'd all my time go? Oh, I know it. You know, and it seems like every day goes faster and faster, and uh, you never know where the time goes. You know, I mean, it seemed like at work today, the day just flew by, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's because we're gearing up for you know construction season and traffic count season and stuff like that, but. Um, it just seemed like today went really fast. I don't know if it was just because I was busy all day and, you know, didn't watch the clock. And uh, I remember when, you know, I remember the days of high school where you you sit and watch the clock for the bell to ring at three o'clock and it's five minutes till three and 
you know it's been a half hour and you look up and it's still five minutes till three you know i have i've had many of them days <laughs> you know for two hours it's five minutes till three it's like come on ring <laughs> you know yeah i feel that i feel that in my soul because that's like <sighs> like at the doctor's office when you're sitting there waiting and you're like can it get any more painstaking because i mean there's that real clinical smell going on already and then there's you know there's inevitably a sick kid who's a little too close for comfort and you're like trying not to be rude because i mean he's sick and then there's like somebody really loud and annoying on the phone and you're like, come on, take it outside. And you can hear the chatter of the office work and you can kind of start to sense who's mad at who and who doesn't like working with who. And I'm like watching all this and I feel like that movie, like Sherlock Holmes the movie. And I'm like, I'm noticing all these ticks that people are doing. And I look at the clock and it's like a minute's passed. And I'm like, oh God, just no, no. <laughs> Please call my name any second. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's get into the meat of this because uh, I know we got seven steps to cover. So, uh, so what is it? personal change is an external or an internal experience, and it's also an external experience at the same time, and it stems from a change in our mindset and branches out from there. So what does that say that uh, the personal change can't happen quickly? It can. And there's a routine, you know, and the steps we're going to cover, you know, helps you with your personal change. It, it depends on you. You can uh, have personal breakthrough or personal change, you know, quickly, or you can do it slowly, whichever you want to do. And uh, we'll start off with. Uh, uh, I got a little more. To cover before I get into step stage one, but uh, we easily recognize the process over our typical lifespan, and we start out as infants and progress through childhood and adolescence, early adulthood, okay, come back in. middle age, and eventually old age. Although some people hours. pass through the stages at different rates and different speeds, the sequence always remains the same. So these clearly define the stages of our life and are not limited to the physical changes alone. Changes always occur on all levels in all our primary areas of life. So, you know, and this is kind of goes along with psychology and emotional change that works. They work in conjunction with each other with the physical and, you know, vice versa. Um, it's part of... I guess you'd call it part of your personal development plan and part of your growth stage. And that's why, you know, we always just stress on personal development, mindset training, stuff like that. And that's why we talk about it a lot because that's part of the personal growth, your personal change. You know, if you don't invest in your mindset, you don't invest in your personal growth then you're going to stay stuck where you're at. And, you know, and next year at this time, you're going to be stuck in the same place you were last year or next year, this year, <laughs> there you go. So stage one is to develop awareness. The motivation of, for change begins with the sense that we aren't fulfilling our life's potential. This awareness can be subtle at first, where you perhaps just realize you no longer feel efficient in a certain area. And, you know, you feel you're not, growing you feel you're not um making a difference in the world you feel you're not living your life's purpose so you develop an awareness that you're not especially you know especially when you come into the online home business arena you know you spend so much time going out and meeting people and stuff like that and you you realize right away that you're not where you should be and where you need to grow at so you start working on yourself and that's called awareness you know you start developing your awareness because you see how other leaders interact with people. You see how they talk and speak. You know, you realize you're no different than them, but they're more comfortable in their own skin. And you have to, um, you become aware that you're not comfortable in your own skin. You're, uh, what, you got any comments on this? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, when it, 
I personal change, developing awareness. Um, you know, for me, this comes from a sense of questioning a lot of things. Um, you know, that, that tail end is where you were talking about developing an awareness and we get into autopilot mode when we get into these routines, you know, we, we get to a, a place where the body takes over and the mind takes a back seat and goes to sleep and you have to make an effort to keep your mind vigilant and awake and, and make sure that it's, it's being fed. It's being, it's kind of like a, a lot of, bodybuilders go through a thing right before competition where they do like a fasting almost to like a depletion and you you're training your body to burn all these calories it's it's been conditioned to burn all these calories for months and months and months some of these builders go through years of training before they ever do a competition and um you know they've gone through all this where they they burn so much and so when they go through this depletion stage, uh, I mean, of course, there's a, a reason for it. It's, it's for the competition. Uh, but the, the point I'm getting at here is their body continues to do all the processes it's been trained to do, but they're also training their body to do it on less. And, um, you know... <laughs> your mind gets to that point too, where it's depleted and it's just going into a low power mode and it's going to do the basic functions. And a lot of times um, because of our work environments, we are in, you know, our urban setting of caveman like thinking. So our cortisol levels are up. There's a whole lot of brain activity that's happening, but it's so basic human function that your brain isn't even thinking about it. It just does it. <laughs> Sounds like kids are going crazy. So then we get into stage two, which is the discovery. The discovery stage is where your conscious mind has located the primary source of your discomfort and is doing the best, doing its best to help you become more aware of your of its presence. At this stage, you may experience some resistance of your ego, you know, because that's what we call stepping out of your comfort zone when you start discovering stuff. Um, a human ego often seeks refuge in denial, where it pretends that your discomfort is resulting from a source that is external to, to you opposed to the internal one. And this is where we, this stage is where we discover the problem or like a self-limiting uh, belief or uh, something that's holding us back and uh, this is where we start discovering that and we start learning how to fix that uh see we got some people in the chat dave renicky is in the chat hey buddy how you doing so it's crucial that we accept the source of whatever's holding us back uh that's or the uneasy feeling within ourselves and you know, realize that it's in our within our ability con to control it. Um, we have to adopt a new mindset and move on to the next stage in the process of personal change. So, wonder what I know you got. Comment on discovering your problems. Discovering your problems. So yeah, this is this is a nice continuity that going into you know you. If you've got this uneasy feeling, I like the way they put that, an uneasy feeling or sense or um, hunch, gut feeling, whatever you want to call it, intuition, um, discomfort, uh, a lot of people will fill that with, well, it's just because of X or it's just because of this or it's just because of that. And it's very easy to distance ourselves from the problem where, you know, oh, well, if I just had more money, or if I just had this or that, I wouldn't have any problems and I'd be happy, you know, or uh, I can't lose weight because, you know, it's just genetic or, you know, there's lots of different ways that people comfort themselves and, and say, well, it's not up to me. It's this external factor that I have no 
control over. And that's not true <laughs> at all. Um, you know, there's, there's ways to overcome any obstacle if you're looking for it. And that's the pe part that people get hung up on, I think, the most is not looking for a real solution and not wanting to find a real solution because they're not wanting to put in the work. Um, for various reasons. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so now we're going to move into stage three, which is ownership of it. Uh, it must take sole responsibility uh, for our discomfort, our unease, or our problem that's holding us back. Um, we must fully acknowledge that the source of our problem is internal, not external. And we need to recognize that our thought patterns, emotional, emotional inconsistencies, life habits, uh, limiting beliefs, and our faulty, our faulty reasoning is what needs to be fixed. You know, and most of the time it's a self-limiting belief that's holding us back or uh, a lifestyle habit, you know, our thinking, you know, our thinking holds us back a lot, you know, uh, well, I was born poor, so I'll die poor, you know, that's, that's limited thinking, you know, and we all, all of us go through that, you know, um, a big one that, you know, I faced, you know, wonder what had to slap me around about this, that I was, I wasn't enough. I wasn't providing enough value, you know, and I got, got it from three people. I mean, wonder what smacked me around a little bit. Dave Renicky smacked me around a little bit and, and then Katie smacked me around some more and, you know, I was being enough. I was providing enough value to everybody in our community, but you know, your mind plays funny tricks on, on you and makes you believe that you're not enough and you're not doing enough. And, and you're not, uh, you're not capable of having success because you know, your, your past family members didn't have success, you know, and, that, and that's total bullshit. You know, you define your success and that's what we're saying in the, in this stage of uh, taking ownership, you know, you have to take ownership for your faults, your, uh, your bad habits, your uh, limiting beliefs, the things that are holding you back. And if you're not having success, you have to own that baby that you're not having success because you're standing in your own way. Yeah, for sure. And I totally agree. Um, I, and most people don't want to accept ownership because that means they have to accept the responsibility and the work. And it feels unfair. That's an emotional response. It feels unfair because, oh, well, I grew, I was born poor and, you know, well, that wasn't my fault. And I have to work myself up. I didn't have the education that, you know, kids who were born with more money and lived in better areas and didn't have, you know, single parent house, all that place you know you can play that argument all day long and you can sing that song but at the end of the day it's not going to make you any better when you change the tune and you say you know what yeah I was born poor but you know what I learned how to work my butt off and I'm continuing to do that you are now able to fix it you are now able to change it if you don't take ownership over the crap you can't take ownership over the good. It won't come. It doesn't come until you fix what's in front of you. Like, okay, yeah, you know what? My parents were poor and that's not my fault, but me staying here and accepting this and just continuing this pattern isn't going to make it better for myself or my kids or my family or anybody else involved in my life. So fix it. Like <laughs> to me, it's just creating momentum. And I say that now, but the old self <laughs> that I've evolved from would be like, nah, that's not fair. <laughs> Hold on a second. And thank goodness I'm not that person anymore. But um, I mean, I've, I've heard that argument and I've said that argument so many times, you know, and I, it didn't really change for me until I was afraid that my kids would sing the same song. And then I was like, well, crap, that's not good enough. <laughs> like, if anything's not good enough in this equation, it is not me. It is the circumstances. And I got to change that now. <laughs> You're still muted. 
Your song's on mute. <laughs> I do that every week. You know, I was trying to say that I seen you commented. Dave was saying hi to you in the chat, and I, but I seen you commented in there. Um, yeah, and you know, you're so right. You know, people don't don't own it. You know, they just the excuse book comes out, and I got an excuse for this, and I got an excuse for that, and I got an excuse for that. You know, so <laughs> it's the Webster's of excuses. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, you know, the people that see success, you know, and they might not see it right away. They, uh, they let their words and their mind hold them back and they let their, you know, a deck of excuse cards. That's what, that's what I was passing out there. You know, their deck of excuse cards comes out, you know, and they, they flip that excuse card every time, you know, and, you know, and this is a stage where you, you expose that thing that's holding you back. You you take that excuse card and you, you know, put it back in the deck and you throw it in the trash can because we're going to go on and we're going to now stage four, we're going to expose what the problem is. Uh, you know, the process of change, we expand our search in our, in our identity and identify the habit or the attitude that is stopping has stopped us or stopped serving us has, that is stopping us or, or, or well, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> you know, the, our limiting belief there, there it is. I kicked it out finally. Our limiting belief that's holding us back, you know, uh, you know, our, uh, a core belief that's not holding, that it's, uh, not serving us anymore or that's holding us back. And, uh, one reason for being logic is so, this is a seldom useful tool in the emotional arena. I mean, I'm reading some of this stuff, but I'm trying to paraphrase some of it in this paragraph, you know, because there's some good points and stuff. But basically, we've owned what the problem is. We know what it is. And now we're going to expose it so we can, as we progress through the other uh, four stages, three stages, that we can start learning how to fix fix it. And somebody's chatting up a storm. The excuse book on sale out of Amazon. <laughs> Guess 37. Hi. So Melinda is guest 37. Oh, great to see you here, Melinda. First time on Thriving Thursday. Uh, but, you know, that's a good point. The excuse book, you know, uh, you can buy that on Amazon, you know, and there's some other great books out there. I know I, I had a list I talked about last week, last week about a list of books, you know, to go out and find and talk about changing your mindset and stuff like that. And, uh, but the main key is, you know, we've exposed the, the thing that's holding us back, the, the lifestyle, you know, that's holding us back or the habit that's holding us back. And that's what I want to say. The lifestyle habit, uh, the perception of, you know, I was born poor, I'll die poor, you know, uh, the limiting belief and basically the words that we put out in the universe. You know, uh, uh, you know, we get up first thing. What do you do when you get up first thing in the morning? Do you hit the snooze button? Well, your day might be on snooze all day long because that's the first thing you do. As soon as the alarm clock goes off in the morning, you hit the snooze button. And I'm guilty of this a lot of times. I want that extra five minutes of sleep. But it's nine minutes on my phone and I definitely want it. I yeah. want all the sleep. <laughs> but I listened to Mel. What, what's her last name? Mel Brooks or something like that. Blonde. She's on Robin, TikTok. Robin, right? Mel, Mel Robbins, yeah. I was listening to her on the way home. She said, you know, instead of hitting that snooze button and snoozing through your whole day, so the alarm clock goes up, jump up out of bed and start your day fresh, you know, and put your mindset start, you know, doing your affirmations right there. I know wonder what does affirmations first thing in the morning. I do a few, you know, first thing I like to do is kick in uh, an audio, you know, or mindset, you know, Tony Robbins or Les Brown or somebody like that. And I'll listen to that while I'm getting ready in the morning. And it, it puts me in the right frame of mind. But, you know, I'm guilty of hitting the snooze button myself because I want that extra five minutes of sleep. <laughs> So exposure, your thoughts. Oh, wait, I was, I was already unmuted. <laughs> oh, it's a blonde moment. <laughs> exposure, is that what you said? Did I get that right? 
Do what? Exposure. Was that what you asked me? Yeah, exposure. Uh, what What do you expose your mind to? Is that the parameters we're operating uh, in? Oh, well, you're exposing the problem that we found in stage three. You exposure know. to the problem. Um, I think it's a good idea to become a. I, my operation, my whole mindset really operates off of awareness. Um, probably to a fault that I'm acutely aware of what's going on around me and inside my mind. Um, but I operate from that platform just because I feel like when you, okay, you've got the problem. Um, you're taking ownership of it. Like, okay, this is, this is my problem and I'm going to fix it. How do I fix it? I think it's, important to understand how many various ways it's affecting you before you look at fixing it. Um, because, you know, if you've got a whole bunch of busted pipes and you only fix one, well, good, but did you really fix it? <laughs> you know, did you really fix that problem? Um, so going through and taking an inventory and really exposing yourself to opening up your mind and seeing where it all stands, where the cards fall when you have the, uh, any set of problems, you know, any, any problem in particular, any which way you want to roll the dice. Um, it's important to see where it's at. You know, it's important to see, is it, is it in my family life? Is it in just my head? Is it in my personal life? Is it affecting my relationships? Is it affecting my work? Is it affecting my business? Because chances are, it is <laughs> in different ways. It may be one or two, it may be all, um, but it is going to affect more than one thing. Um, so it's, for me, exposure to the problem only creates more awareness of how to fix it. You're still muted. Are you I'm sure old. you're a techie? <laughs> yeah. Well, I keep muting because Jason's in the background talking, you know, and I didn't want to pick him up because sometimes he gets rowdy and starts screaming and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mine are fighting over there. <laughs> so now we're gonna move into stage five, which is the intention. This is the threshold of personal change. You have you have identified your old belief or behavior pattern that's holding you back and now you're motivated to replace it with something more useful um, this is a stage where you know we start looking at personal change we start developing a plan of action and uh, you know it's pretty easy to identify your new desired state where you want to be but the hard part is developing a plan of action and that's the most critical part. You have to develop a plan of action, how you're going to um, replace this intention, you know, replace this old belief. And it, it starts with you embracing a positive mindset and formulating a plan of action, like I just said. And the plan of action can be using affirmations to uh, reprogram your mindset, you know. Uh, like I was just saying in the last segment, you know, instead of hitting the snooze, jump out of bed as soon as the alarm clock goes off and start off with, you know, a positive affirmation, a positive video while you're getting ready in the morning, um, anything like that. Um, let me see what's been said. Dave, you are unique, unique on every, unique up on everybody. <laughs> but. You know, you have the intention now, so, and you, you know, you, like I said, you've identified this, the limiting belief or the bad behavior that's causing you, you know, so instead of saying, uh, I can't be successful because people in my family aren't successful, well, then you need to change that. I am successful and I have a plan of action to take me down my road of success or, or something along that lines, you know, and you start reprogramming into the positive. And it takes more than just saying the words you have to, uh, you have to invest in mindset training. You have to invest in, you know, maybe personal coaching, finding a mentor and personal growth. Because if you don't put a plan of action into, into the plan, you know, then it's not going to happen. You know, uh, 
I think uh, investing to commit to your plan yeah. is essential. Yeah. Um, that's intention is so powerful. It is so, so, so powerful. And it's so personal. Um, this is one thing I kind of go a little Wayne Dyer ish on is, um, you know, when you set a new intention, it's a little bit important not to tell anybody at first and not because of, you know, being afraid to speak it into existence, not at all, but because it's so new and it's so foreign when you start to develop yourself this way. Um, when you're, you're in your beginning stages, it's very, very important to create, you know, sort of a cocoon around this, this new growth and you want to protect it because not everybody is going to understand. And when you're so new at it, you don't want an influence getting in and creating a doubt into that intention. You want to keep it oh, just a little bit to yourself at first, <laughs> just a little bit, let it get some roots, let it sit there and, and really, you know, marinate into you. When you have an intention, it can, it can really, really shape the way that you operate if you allow it to, if you allow it space and you allow it some, some actual persistent and consistent effort. Um, but yeah, I, I love intention for this reason because when you set your mind to something and you commit to actually investing, say you don't get a coach, say you don't get a mentor and your goal is just to be a little bit more you every day. I mean, it could be something so simple like that. Um, you know, it's, you don't necessarily need a coach or a mentor. It would definitely help you um, propel your growth. But let's say for whatever reason, you're not going to get one. Um, I think it's important to commit and really commit and say, okay, I'm going to figure out one new thing about me every day, or I'm going to do one thing I like every day. Um, even if it's something small, if it's, you know, toasting the bread on your sandwich, I don't care. <laughs> um, it can be something so small like that, but it can make all the difference in the world. And slowly you'll start to see where these small little actions pile up and you start doing things more, um, for yourself and you start seeing that you take your self care more seriously and you start branching out more seriously and you start reaching into the side of you to help the person next to you. Cause they're like, Hey, what are you doing different? Is it your hair? And you're like, no, it's just me. And I'm just being me or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, but you'll start to see it slowly seep into your life. And it's really got some strong roots. And then you're like, all right, I can do this. You know, you give yourself that little, platform this edge if you will and it can make a huge difference i mean if you think about jumping you can jump to a farther distance if you're higher up so give yourself that platform give yourself that edge and just allow yourself to grow that way yeah exactly you know i like that how you said that you know and, th and that's kind of why I brought up listening to Mel Robinson because, she, you know, I don't know what it is about that woman, but she makes me stop and think about, am I doing, doing it right? Am I doing it enough? Um, maybe you can add to it. I know you want to say something about it. <laughs> She's just so frank. <laughs> I know. I know. She's just so frank and kind of like, <clears throat> she just spits it out and you're like, well, am I? Uh, give me a second. <laughs> it's like she says something. If she asks a question, she has this way of pausing afterwards to actually make you feel like you're supposed to answer. You should, it could be an audiobook or a video, and you know she's not right there waiting for you to answer, but you're like, you feel compelled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, well, I was, I think it was Monday night, Monday night or Tuesday night. I actually listened to her story. And today I just kind of popped in an audio on the way home and, and it ha she happened to be in it. But I listened to her story. I think it was Tuesday night on the way home. And, you know, she ain't playing no bullshit. You know, she's not talking shit. If you listen to her story, that woman went through hell and back. And she made a decision and picked herself up, invested in changing her mindset, changing her attitude. and. Look at her now. She's on a stage. I've seen her in TED Talks. 
she's been around quite a while and she talks about things that are going to stop in your tracks you know and that's what i liked about her um you know and there's all kinds of stuff out there that you can start to invest in that don't cost you a dime you know you can find her my robinson on youtube all you gotta do is type in the search youtube and tony robbins you know there's tons of tony robbins stuff on there there's all kinds of people on there you know that have gone through this personal change and all it comes down is to a decision and that's where we get into step six step six is the action step taking consistent action is the only means by which to achieve real-time results if you don't take any action nothing will change and your discomfort with the present reality will intensify because you're more aware of the problem now so taking action demands that we let go of our fear and we embrace the faith and uncertainty and we step out of our comfort zone and into a gap between where we are where we were per previously and where we want to go now and you hear tony robbins you hear uh, uh gary vandercheck was in this audio too you know and uh, you know people and this kind of leads into the taking action you know people whine and cry about their current situation but they don't want to do nothing to change it and that that's a good very uh, gary vanderchuk quote because i've heard him say it a hundred times and it's totally true you know you hear the well i want to i had a guy you know he sent me an email where he come from i don't know i don't i'm not friends with him on facebook or but he sent me an email he must have got in on my my blog or something and seen my email address he sent me an email i need your help so I email him back. What do you need help with? Be specific and detailed. Okay, I get a two-word response back. Make money. I'm like, okay. I said, so I emailed him back and said, what kind of money do you want to make? You want to make some extra cash? You want to make some some pocket change, some pocket money, or you know, want to make a lifetime changing money? You know, uh, be specific and tell me what you want so I can help you and define a path for you. He emails me back, make money online. I'm like, all right. So I just sent him a link. Said, here's a video. Uh, I said, here's a, a free video for uh, video marketing. It teaches you video marketing is the fastest way to make money online. Here's a free training on video marketing on how to do it. Let me know if you have any questions. No more. Nope. I didn't hear nothing from him. I didn't bother to check and see if he if he uh, even logged into it, you know, put his email address in or anything. So I wasn't going to keep emailing him back and forth for two word responses. You know, if if you're serious and you got a real problem and you need help, when somebody says be specific, then you be specific and define the problem. I know. What you know I really hate it when people do that because it's like you don't go to the doctor and say my my foot hurts and they go okay well where and you're like on my foot <laughs> that is so unhelpful <laughs> how do you expect me to help you <laughs> like I could only imagine what a doctor would say if somebody said that <laughs> like my stomach hurts great which part there's only like 30 feet of gastrointestinal issues that could be happening <laughs> I can only imagine. My doctor would be like, <laughs> kind of need to at least point <laughs> to where. <laughs> I can narrow some stuff down for you. Right. But, but it drives me crazy because, you know, nobody wants to, I shouldn't say nobody, but a, a lot of people don't. They just, uh, I want help. And it's only qualified to be help if you do the work yourself and you have assistance. Not somebody who does it for you, not somebody who spills everything. And I, I just, I don't understand where this expectation comes from. Sorry, that's my rant on that. Yep. And I just logged into M MOSP and checked. He wasn't serious because he didn't even opt into the video. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, why, why do that? If, if you're not going to give a detailed response and, you know, Somebody, somebody sends you a free training and you don't even opt into it. You don't want to make money very bad. You don't want, you know, you're looking for somebody to do the work for you is what you're looking for. Looking for a handout. 
Yeah. Dave, I cannot believe this. Dave says, we had a guy in government say the greatest cause of dying is death. <laughs> I once heard somebody say the greatest cause of death was birth. Yeah, true. I've heard both of them. So. <laughs> oh, God. So, taking action demands that we let go of our fear and that we get out of our comfort zone and start working toward the direction that we want to go. And so that also comes in where having a plan of action helps. If you don't have a plan of action, you know, that's where, I mean, like wonder what said earlier, you don't have to have a coach. You don't have to have a mentor, but that's where a mentor and a coach may point you in the direction that you need to go and help you uh, define a plan of action. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I had had a mentor or a coach, in my beginnings <laughs> of this, this change, this evolution, um, I, I've, I look at the, the beginning couple years of where this all started from for me. And I'm like, man, you know, I kind of haphazardly stumbled on things and wandered around painfully for years. I mean, it was literal years. I'm looking at like, three, four, and then here in the last two where I have had mentors and coaches and actual, you know, comrades, <laughs> actual friends in arms here, um, and my, my growth has just rapidly accelerated. I just don't recognize the person that I was even two years ago, you know, even three years ago, four years ago. I mean, that's like a total stranger to me now. I do, there are things that I did and said back then that I look and I, I think about and I'm like, man, what was I thinking back then to actually say that and believe it no less? I mean, that was, <laughs> was an outright belief. And, um, you know, now I'm so grateful to not know that person. <laughs> but, you know, having coaches and mentors, this is my point, was just, you know, it's a night and day difference. It's a night and day difference. And I, I don't say that to sell anything or to, to do any, uh, anything of that sort. I could care less if you joined me. If you did, great. Let me help. But if not, you know, I wish you the best of everything. And I hope you find what you're looking for. But, you know, taking action, you've got to let go of that emotional response of this is scary. This is different. This is I don't know what's going to happen. Well, you know what's going to happen if you don't change. And that's scary. Because for me, sitting there thinking that I was only going to provide what I already had for my children and that that was going to be all that they would see as an example and probably provide for their families. And then to be on my deathbed at who knows how old and think, I should have done more. I should have done so much more. I, that is one regret I just can't live with. I mean, that's not even one regret. That's an everyday regret. I should have done more. I can't live with that. I just can't. And that's scary. So the, the knowing what's going to happen if you don't change and knowing that you're going to go to your death with that in mind, not knowing what's on the other side, no matter your belief. Oh, God, that's, that's already scary enough. That's scarier than changing. Go ahead, throw me in the pool. I'll change. Like, I don't care now. <laughs> that was, that was my mindset when I, I made that realization. I'll take the change. Oh yeah, I agree with that, you know, and you know, you have to think about the inevitable of what comes at the end of our life, you know, and at the end of your life, you're laying there as your life slowly slipping away and you look back and are you going to have look at what you did in your life and say, "Well, what if I would have done this. What if I would have done that? What if I'd only stepped out of the comfort zone and done that? You know, what if I would have taken on that business and done everything I could possibly do to be successful at it? You know, some of the greatest assets in the world are in the cemeteries because they're the unsung songs that have never been sung or the big ideas that have never been invented or the big business have never been 
realized because people were too afraid of take you know to take their chance step out of their comfort zone take action and put it into play and you know don't be the one that's laying there in your last moments and sit there and say well what if i would have done this or that you know don't be that person now's the time to make the change and start going in the direction you want to go which leads us into step seven is integration this is the last phase of the process of personal growth we've uh where changes now happen uh we found out what our problem was or limiting belief or our, uh behavior that was holding us back um, we've changed it uh, or you know we've identified it we've uh no, let me go back i get brain dead a little bit once in a while you know uh we became aware of it we discovered it we took ownership of it we exposed it and we set an intention then we took action on that intention and now we're going to integrate it into our life uh, we've now grown to appreciate what's achievable we know we can change you know that i am enough i can deliver a powerful webinar i can deliver a powerful speech to my audience i can provide value to the marketplace excuse me i know it's achievable um and at this stage it is also likely that you have to let go or what did i say <laughs> i'm trying to paraphrase it as i, I speed read it um, it's also likely that you have to let go of an established belief or behavior that wasn't serving you and that's what we did we know and we have now replaced it with something more useful and by choosing to do personal growth and mindset training and growing stepping out of your comfort zone taking action um, the more you take control of this process, the more natural it becomes. And the more you embrace change, personal growth becomes a way of life. Resisting the change is easier, is an easier course of action. But what happens when you resist the change or resist the change? The deck of excuse cards comes back out and you start flinging them out. You know, so embrace the change. The more you embrace it, the more you change, the more developed you your mindset, the more you grow. The more personal growth you have, the more the easier it becomes to stomp down these things that hold you back, like limiting beliefs and belief that you're not enough or that you don't provide enough value. Okay, anything on integration? Integration. Yes, for sure. Um, sorry, I was waiting for my kids to start feeling. <laughs> um, it's, this can be so cohesive to your life if you allow it. That I think that's the one thing most people <coughs> are intimidated by, other than when it comes to actually changing. Um, you know, most people will say, oh, I'm unhappy, and it's because of this. But I feel like a lot of people are unwilling to change because they're scared of, one, what it means, and, two, what they're going to have to do now, what they're going to feel obligated to do. Well, first of all, you're not obligated to do anything. You want to stay unhappy and miserable and go for it. Just don't complain about it. <laughs> don't make me listen to it. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you have – the uh, other hand here where integration can be very, very simple. And it's like I said, you start with one little thing and it trickles. It just creates a trickle effect, the butterfly effect, if you will. It just takes over and it doesn't even, it's so seamless. It it will be extensive at first where, or not extensive, um, uncomfortable at first. It will be foreign because it is foreign. It, it's, you <laughs> You were in sleep mode and now you're awake and now you're aware and now we're, we're going to fix some things. <laughs> we're going to get out of that autopilot and, and actually address what needs addressing. And you can take control of your life. Even the parts that you have no control over, you can inevitably can, or essentially control because you can take ownership of the outcome. The X factor happens. Life happens, right? 
okay, you got a flat tire, but you don't actually have to be angry about it. Yes, it's frustrating. It's a terrible experience, especially, you know, if you're already tied up funds and you got to juggle things. It doesn't have to be an end all. You don't have to stay mad about it for all the rest of the week, you know, and I've known people like that where they just get so mad over one little thing and I'm like, dude, at least you're, you're not dead. Like, at least you didn't have a blowout and you didn't wreck and you'll cause a five car pile up. Let's be grateful here. Like, there's so many different ways you can, you can spin this into something better. And that's just one example, but you know, you can take ownership of, all right, well that happened. Now I'm just going to fix it. And it becomes that much simpler because what happens when you get angry over something is you create resistance. And when you accept it, you skip the resistance and you just, it, it actually is more of a go with the flow than actually going with the flow and going into autopilot mode. You start accepting life. Acceptance doesn't equal approval. They're not the same things. They're two different words for two different reasons. You would just have to be able to accept and adapt. It's the whole Darwinism. <laughs> adapt or die, man. <laughs> adapt, or, adapt or die. In this case, adapt or die unhappy. And I just refuse. <laughs> I would rather die trying to be a little bit better every day than having to die unhappy. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I like your tire analogy, you know. And, you know, when you have a flat tire, you only have two choices. You can either bitch and complain about it, or you can get the, new, the spare tire out and change it. One or the other, you know. And same thing with happens, you know, in life. But, you know, if life knocks you down, you can either lay down there and take it, or you can get back up and do something about it. And But most people just pull out the deck of excuse cards and start throwing them out there. Well, Life knocks me down. It always knocks me down. I can't get back up. I phone and I can't get up. <laughs> Life alert. <laughs> yeah, but personal change is something that you have to invest in daily to do it. You know, by reading educational stuff, reading motivational stuff. There's no such thing as me being able to motivate you. You have to motivate me. Uh, motivation is horseshit, I think. No one can motivate you. You can't even motivate yourself. But you can be inspired to do something. You know, if you're inspired to create a better life, then you go out there and create a better life. You know, that's it, it's easy to do, but or not, that ain't how I want to say it. It's simple to do, but it's not easy to do. That's what I want to say. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of dedication. It's going to take a lot of time missed with your family. But in the end, it'll pay off. But you have to take the action to do it. I know Dave's making comments. Anger is never good. It's one of my habits. Never lose it. Rather use your anger as a challenge to make change. Life alert. Now on the news. <laughs> and yeah, that's totally true. You know, I used to be really hot headed and through mindset training and listen to audios, reading, you know, think and grow rich, you know, uh, jab, jab, right hook, stuff like that. You know, it's helped me change my mindset and I very rarely get mad anymore. And you know, I'll tell you how hot headed I was that at growing up, I was probably between junior high and high school, that's probably in over 30 fights and I never lost. So when I went into the military, I boxed amateur in the, in the military. I was 30 and 0 with 28 knockouts. I've never been beat in. But I always had the attitude that someday I would run into somebody that would just kick my butt. But the attitude I had was somebody crossed me, we're going to fight right now. You know, and I don't have that attitude anymore because my personal development has taken me away from that instant fuse setting me off. 
and helping me control my anger issues and make me become a better person because I worked on the change. I took the action to do the changes that I needed to do, but have a better attitude and a better outlook on life. Yeah, you definitely have to do your due diligence. Melinda says allowing it is sometimes uh, hard, and it's true. It's not. <laughs> yeah, don't make Jamie mad. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have to worry about that too much these days. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot to make me mad anymore. So, but Melinda had a point. You know, allowing it is is difficult. It's difficult to accept for sure. Um, you know it. Because it's not what we want, but we have to understand that the process of accepting what we don't want is the process of refinement to getting what we do want. Yes, yes. I could have said it better myself. Um, so how do you guys feel about personal change? Do you think it's something you should invest in and do every day? Or do you think it's just all wishy-washy hogwash? We already know my answer to this. I know what it is. I was just waiting <laughs> to see what the comments said. And, you know, I know how Dave and Melinda feel about it. You know, Dave. Dave. <laughs> he says, don't make Wonder mad, not with all those kids. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we got like three minutes to end the show. So I'm going to go ahead and see if you got any last thoughts, last comments, and then I'll close out the show. The effort of change far outweighs the regret of not. That's my thought. The effort of change is, is far, just far outweighs the regrets of not changing. Yep. Well, I want to thank Dave and Melinda for being here and whoever else is in the chat that doesn't log in and chat. You know, we always seem to have a few people every week that come come along and they watch a show and they don't log in and chat, you know, jump in and say hi, ask questions. We won't bite you. I promise. You know, I won't get mad at you. I wonder what won't get mad at you. So <laughs> that's what we're here for. That's what we show up every week for because we're dedicated to our personal growth, our personal change and anybody that needs help along the way. Now you don't, we're not selling anything on here. You know, if you want to, join us personally then there's a button for me contact jamie shaw there's a button for wonder Wit. contact them or contact them contact wonder Wit on the work with her i'm bad tonight i don't know what to do <laughs> jamie what did you did you drink jumble juice is that what it is no i'm drinking cherry vanilla doctor or cherry vanilla pepsi you see you can't even say that one hour Spit yeah. it out. <laughs> uh, I need a nap. <laughs> I do too, actually. You know, it was like <laughs> I had an appointment today. When I got home, I was so tired. I was like, man, what's wrong with me? I laid down on the couch for like two seconds and I swear, boom, 30 minutes later, my alarm's going off and I'm like drooling into the pillow. It was like <laughs> grossness. And I was like, what happened? <laughs> It's like that was the shortest 20 minutes of my life. Yeah, I like when you're so tired, you're sitting there watching TV, and then you wake up, you all of a sudden you open your eyes, and it's two hours later, and you're like, Where the hell am I at? Then you realize you're in your own house. <laughs> but uh, I got a big long list of people, you know, thanks to the guys that are in the chat, you know, hanging out with us. We appreciate you guys. Um, Monday night, you know, come hang out. 24 Hour Marketing Mastermind with Dave Renicky, Katie Stage, Pop Stage, and myself. Uh, then there's uh, my support friends webinar at the same time. It's called Money Monday. Uh, if you want at, want to know about it, get a hold of Wonder Whip. Um, then Tuesday, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time is Tech Tuesday with Sonia and Maria. And then at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is Ricky's hangout. Um, Ricky Burrows. I don't have the link available. You know, if you want to know any of these hangouts, where they're at, what time they're at, send either one of us a link and we, we can put you in touch with the hangout. Um, Wisdom 
Wednesday, Pat Patterson, Dave Renicky, Katie Stage, and Dr. Wade are on Wisdom Wednesday. And then my support friends has a Wisdom Wednesday as well at 8 p.m. Standard Time. And then back here, Thriving Thursday. And we're having, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. I thought about talking about our life balance work workbook in our uh, NLP practitioners course, but uh, I don't know if that's something you want to talk about or, or, or what. I think we can play with this. I think I might have some life balance. I might have to do some more studying. It's been a while since I've been in that workbook. So, <laughs> but you know, life balance is a good topic, you know, because we have to have a good work life balance in our lives. So I think it'd be an excellent topic. So, yeah, you know, it's not even just work balance, it's a work life balance. That one gets thrown out a lot, but like there's so many different facets to life. So I think it would be a cool topic for discussion. Yep. So we'll see you all next Thursday night, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. I can't talk. 8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thriving Thursday. We'll see you all next week. Bye, guys.